Today is a masterclass for dog portraiture. So anybody who has been interested in learning how to paint watercolor dogs, this class is going to be for you. So you should have received an email from me if you have already signed up for the challenge. Uh, you would have received a printable outline here. So I have mine right here, ready to go. Isn't he so cute? I'm so excited about this one, you guys. Um, so what that is, is a printable outline that you can print directly onto watercolor paper if your printer can print on cardstock. If it can't, I explained a few other ways and how you can trace it. Um, so you'll want that. You'll want to have your printable outline. And then you'll also want to have, I sent out a reference photo. So that's really helpful too, to have right next to you. If you could pull it up on like a screen, a computer screen or an iPad. And then it's going to be using some pretty basic supplies today. So I will just kind of run through that. Welcome to everybody who is just joining us live now. I'm so excited. This will be available for replay afterwards. So you can still sign up if you don't know what this is. It's a watercolor portraiture masterclass. So I have the link to sign up in my profile still. And you'll get access to that printable outline. Okay, let's talk about supplies. And also want to mention too, if you have any questions as far as supplies that I don't cover, um, as far as like pet portraiture in general, I would love to answer those and I'm going to try and answer all of them at the very, very end of the class. So drop them in the comments and I'm going to scroll back and get to those at the end. All right. So back to our supplies. So for this pet portrait and kind of all of the pet portraits that I paint, really only use like four to three brushes. So specifically, I love this number 10, anything like a size seven to a 10. It's a little bit of a bigger brush. It's a pointed round brush, as you can see here. So it has a nice pointed tip to it, but I'll be able to do a lot of bigger strokes with this as well. And then I also have a size six, Windsor and Newton. Um, the other one was by Etcher. It doesn't really matter um, the brand today, I'm just, wanting to share what exactly I'm using today. So this is a size six. This is just a smidge smaller. You'll find that across different brands of brushes, the sizes are not made equal. So a size six in Windsor Newton may be completely different in a size or for an Etcher brand. So just be aware of that, but I'm looking at kind of like a medium um, pointed round brush. And then for those tiny final details, you're definitely gonna want a liner brush. Um, don't worry today if you don't have it. The pointed round brushes, you can really get pretty detailed with those. So that is what we'll be using for, or what I'll be using for brushes. Um, I also just should chat about the paper. So the paper I'm using is Arches 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. And I love it so much. So it's definitely a high quality, 100% cotton paper. And you can lift in different ways with the paint. It dries beautifully. It's just so worth it to have 100% cotton paper when you're doing any type of custom pet portrait, pet portrait work, especially if you're going to be selling them for customers. It's okay to use some like non 100% cotton paper for practice, but it really is pretty great to use 100% cotton even if you're practicing because then you're going to get, it's just such a different feel from paper to paper. So I highly recommend investing in some nice paper. And then for paints, this is all the colors I'll be using today. So you don't need a lot. Oops, I actually forgot. Can't forget this little guy here. So um, you don't need many paints for this class. This is actually all the paints I use for all of my pet portraits. If you've been scrolling my Instagram, every single pet portrait I do is with these seven to eight colors. So yellow ochre, some type of brown. So I use like a Van Dyke brown. Payne's gray is one of my favorites. Um, any type of red and also a little orange is nice, especially in the dog we're painting today has, shows its tongue. So that's where those colors come into play mostly. And then as well as a burnt sienna and even kind of a warmer sienna color. Um, this is one that I've had in my palette for a while and it's just nice to get a little bit of a richer color and I'm not even going to butcher the name of it, but <laughs> let's see if I can get it to focus. 
that's the color. I also have listed that color in the supplies guide um, that I'll share and tell you about later at the end of this, this course. So, um, as well as then, as you probably already know, water and a paper towel that I just use until it's completely full of paint because why waste it? Um, so, and then I forgot Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Definitely recommend having some type of white gouache or this one is my favorite. So this is what I'll use to do any type of tiny hair accents at the end, any little reflections in the face. This is the definitely the paint um, that I love to use. So that is looking to be it for supplies. Um, please drop any questions on supplies in the comments. I'll go through those at the very end. And I am just so excited to share what I love to do. As you probably already know, I'll just kind of do a quick little intro. I uh, do pet portraits. I do other types of commission watercolor portraits too, but pet portraits are definitely my, my favorite and most popular. I have painted dogs and cats since 2017 now, so it's been a while and they make the best types of gifts and commissions for especially the holiday time. So as you can imagine, it's a little crazy right now. Um, and that is what I want to be able to share with you all that I've learned over these past four years in my pet portraiture watercolor um, journey. And I want you to be able to feel confident and learn how exactly I paint and then take those skills and turn them into your own style. And so today's going to be a lot about color mixing, getting uh, textures correct. This is a shorter haired dog, so there won't be quite as much texture you do. You do more about layers as far as bigger washes. Yeah, so keep, an or keep asking me um, questions in there and I'm going to go ahead and answer them at the end. Thank you so much for, for dropping questions. Um, and you'll wanna stick around till the very end because I have a really exciting announcement about my newest uh, master dog watercolor dog breed course that's coming out at the very end of this of this class. So I want to answer questions all around that as well. All right, you guys, I'll see if I can answer anything really quick before I get started. Let's see. Just scrolling back here. What side of paper do you paint on? So um, that is a great question. Paper does have more tooth on one side. So I always paint on the side that has more tooth. The back of this one, it's so hard to see, um, has a little bit of tooth. It kind of feels more like a, a hot press, which is just a flatter, less texture. Um, but I definitely love to use the cold press side. Cold press, if you don't know, gives you more time for the paint not to dry as fast and work with it. And it just, it dries so beautifully and gives you a really pretty um, texture. And then let's see, I saw one more quick question come through. Do you mostly paint head and neck shots if for your subjects? Yes, I do. I have done full body for dogs. And if I do do that, I always um, make sure I do them on 11 by 14 size. It's pretty rare if I go smaller than 11 by 14 size. So um, when I do eight by 10 and five by seven sizes, I always focus on neck and up. Uh, sometimes like you can get a side profile and you'll even find too some dogs have some really crazy ears that maybe go out way too far to the side and those just don't do very well on smaller on smaller pages so five by seven really wouldn't work too well for a dog like a chihuahua that has ears that stick out too far um, same with like a cat if they have really um, long whiskers I really recommend going at least an eight by ten is definitely my most popular size um, that people will order for me Alrighty, so looking good as far as those couple questions. I'm going to turn you all around. So this is a step-by-step -step masterclass. I want you to paint along with me, but if you don't have your stuff with you or if you're not even at home, you can revisit this replay. It'll be over in my IGTV. In this video tutorial, I'll be teaching how to, how to paint a really happy mixed breed dog that looks very similar to a yellow lab color of a coat. So we'll have a variety of 
kind of a charcoal brown for the ears and then a really light yellow ochre and some of the burnt oranges within the nose area and the forehead and then some dark eyes nose and then the pink tongue so to get started i'm going to be working with a pointed round brush size six and I am going to start by activating my paints with some water, so the yellow ochre. And then I'm going to mix that with my Van Dyke Brown. So already I'm getting a nice golden brown color. And I'll just kind of take a medium amount of that paint and first begin on this left ear. And as I paint that, I am going to get rid of that paint on my brush, continue to get rid of it. I want it pretty light as I work my way up into the ear here. And almost like I have barely any on my brush. So something like that is perfect for that first layer. Now let's grab a little bit of a burnt orange or brown color and mix it with that same color mixture we were just working with and let's paint this little flap here so it might run over if it does go ahead and wipe off your brush and just soak that back up and then next i want to take my van dyke brown and mix it with some of the Payne's gray to get a real dark brown and this is the color that's going to go between where the head meets the ear. So being really careful, try not to touch the area we were just painting. Paint a few swipes in there and then smooth it out with um, a cleaner brush. So something like that. Let's let that dry. Just going to smooth that out. And now we can work our way into, I like to move to the other ear right away. So again, the yellow, I'm going to mix it maybe with a little more of the burnt orange this time. And I'll use that as kind of my base color down here. So I have kind of a medium amount on my brush. I'm just going to paint a few swipes and then get rid of that on my brush and then begin to fade that out with water because I want it to be lightest on the edge here where it's hitting the light. And let's continue to fade that down this side. So this is just that first layer. And then now we need to work on the inside of the ear is mostly just catching some brown. Just grab some brown, a little bit of Payne's gray to help kind of darken that. So this is our first layer on the inside of the ear. So we can kind of do some little brush strokes that look like hairs to help blend and fade in where we just were. But we'll have more to come on that as this dries. So let's just get this first layer in. And then blend that into some of those areas that we were just painting. And even blend it up pretty high here. So something like that is is perfect right there. I am going to switch to using a little bit of a larger brush, size 8, with still a nice pointed round tip to it. And I am going to grab the slightest uh, color of yellow ochre. Real, real light, so more water than anything. And I am going to lay in a little bit of color up on the forehead here. Now that's plenty of paint because there's such lightness to this coat up top here. So I'll get rid of some of that paint on my brush with water, dabbing it on my paper towel. I just kind of want to get that first layer in. 
there's so many highlights on this dog so there's not much yellow needed maybe a little more on this side of the face because there is some shadowing areas here but these are just our base layers so nothing has to be perfect Do that down for the neck area. So this time I'm going to mix a little bit of brown with my yellow ochre. I want it to be a little bit darker. Could even add a little paints gray to that so it's more like a charcoal brown. So I'd say I have about a medium amount on my brush and then I'm just going to fade that out. Blend it and fade it out. And then this side, because the light hits it, is lighter. So I'll just use a little bit less. But for now, that's all I will do. So while I wait for areas of the face and then the neck to dry, let's start working on some of the, um, the mouth area. So I'm going to start by using Payne's Gray. And it's pretty dark towards the edges here of the mouth. So I'll just use the real tip of my brush. And I am just going to outline the area that's going to be really, really dark. So just going really slow right now. I don't want to overdo this since it's so dark. So that's all I'll do there. And then I'll get rid of that paint on my brush with my paper towel. And I'm just going to... Paint it in, smooth it out. Again, get rid of some of that because it's going to get a little lighter towards this front area. Try and leave a little bit of a white edge there. If you lose it, that's okay, we can add it back in. Now it's going to get a little bit lighter. And I'm going to add a little bit of red as I work my way to the left of the mouth and then as it gets towards the back it's going to get darker again so I picked up more Payne's gray and I'll just outline that area and down towards the tongue and then we can fill that in Let's add a little bit more. Mine just dried way too light up top here. So while it's still wet, I'm just gonna drop some in. But there is, that's looking, that's looking great. So let's do that same um, color scheme for the nose. So I'll just pick up more Payne's Gray. And the nose is really dark, so I'm actually just going to start by outlining and filling in the nostril area. Going to be all this really dark color but I don't want to do it all at one time so let's just do that and just outline our nose a little bit there and down below then getting rid of that paint on our brush I will blend around those nostril areas that we already painted in So it's just going to appear a little bit lighter. We'll go up and around it. If you get too close and the nostril bleeds, that's okay. We can add that layer back in to make it darker. Now, the lightest part of the nose is on the left. So I'm gonna get rid of that paint all on my brush and just continue to push around the paint that is on the paper. So leaving highlights on the left side. Like that. We can grab more Payne's Gray and just drop it in on the edges only. And especially down towards this bottom half of the nose. So my 
the nostril on my right side of my painting has pretty much disappeared, which could be okay, but I might add it back in at the end. Let's get rid of most of that paint on our brush so we have very little paints, paints gray. And then I'm going to use that to fade below that nose area where there's a lot of little dark hairs. That'll just be my first little layer. So next is the tongue. So the tongue naturally is red and pinks. Then I like to mix a little bit of oranges, get more of a kind of a brighter red. And let's start in the back and then towards the right hand side of that tongue. Now I'm gonna get rid of that paint. It's pretty light, that reddish color that we use for the tongue. So I don't want a lot. I'll just outline that little area up front there so we leave it pretty light and then it's going to get incredibly light towards the left where the light is hitting it so just pushing some of that paint around leaving highlights in areas so I'll just do that for now but while it's still wet let's pick up the slightest bit of Payne's gray and drop it in the back so it gets a little darker and kind of fades. So also that little line down the center. I'll just do that for now and then we'll build up the layers on the tongue. So next I wanna start working on the eyes. I'm gonna gra grab my medium size six pointed round brush and there's a really light caramely color for the iris area. So I'll grab a little of that burnt orange and mix it with the yellow ochre. And I just want to do a little swipe of color on both eyes. So something like that. Doesn't need to be perfect, but I am going to let that dry then and come back to that area in a little bit. So while I wait for that, let's start building up some of the areas around in the face. I'm going to use a really light hue of brown. You can even mix a little Payne's Gray, so it's kind of that charcoal-y brown. So I just painted a few lines down the center. It's pretty dark, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm just going to run back over it, smooth it out. So I'm really just going to continue with that same that same color as I work my way and sculpt around the eye. So we'll do it that direction and towards this direction. So it's gonna look a little funny because you don't have any of the darkness of that eye to pull it together. So just stay patient, pick up some of that same color there. Let's do a little bit of a darkness above that eye and same with this side. Again, grabbing some of that brown, maybe mix a little burnt orange with that. And now there is going to be a little bit of a cheekbone shadow there on this side, and one that kind of travels down and around with the smile. And now I'll just pick up some more of that. And now I'm going to kind of do strokes that go towards the outside of the nose and down and around shape. Like we're, we're sculpting that nose. That's always the trick is to make sure that you paint in the direction that those hairs are going. So all I was doing is just kind of smoothing that out. Let's grab a little bit more. Again, on this side, there's going to be a little bit of a sculpting shadow there. 
let's do a couple real light and then let's also show the smile on that side and then one around the nose I want to darken with that same color on this side of the face a little bit so that maybe it was a little dark I'll just grab more water and smooth that out let's grab more of the brown and let's add in a darker shadow there at the top of the head so kind of going up and around this side of the face is just much darker with the shadow. So something like that is perfect. And next we're going to start adding in the darkness of the eyes. So next let's work on bringing these eyes to life. So I'm going to switch to a really tiny um, triple zero, any type of zero pointed liner brush you'll want for this part. So I'm just going to grab a lot of Payne's Gray on this brush. This one is kind of working like a pencil would. So we're going to begin by outlining the eye. So I'll just kind of be real careful going over the top. So you can have quite a bit of paint on your brush with this, the Payne's Gray. And then try to leave some of the white along the bottom. If you have a really nice tiny brush like I'm using, you can get that type of detail. And then you can even fan off some of the, um, those little hairs that kind of come off the edge there. And there's some that kind of go out in a spiral around, around the eye. So we want to show some of that. Now let's do the same thing for this eye. Again, I'll start in the corner and sculpt it. And do the same thing for the bottom. and then help uh, round out that eye. Then let's paint those little hairs that jet off in a spiral motion. This one's just a little bit darker or has more because of the way that it sits in the shadowed area. But that's all I'll do for that. Now let's do the pupil on the inside. So I'm going to switch to a um, number six. So I'm going to pick up Payne's Gray. Quite a bit of it. I'll start by painting towards that lower half. I'm going to try to leave a little white highlight there. If I lose it, it's okay. Let's get rid of all that paint on our brush and I'm going to Kind of smooth that out into that dark or that light brown area. Let's do the same for the other side now. Picking up all that Payne's Gray. Paint in that circle for the pupil of the eye. And then leaving the best we can some of the white reflection. So I think I'll leave quite a bit for that one. And let's get rid of all that paint on our brush. And then let's smooth in some of these areas. It doesn't have to be quite that light. So just the slightest little bit like that really makes a difference. So something like that. You can always go back and help shape some of these areas. 
colors that looks pretty good so now we'll be able to work around those eyes to help darken certain areas so for example let's continue to darken around the nose so I'm going to pick up brown and mix a little bit of burnt orange with that so it's a warm brown and I'll get very little of that on my brush I'm just going to continue to work in lighter layers so there's kind of a little bit of a sculpted eyebrow hint there you can paint a few thin strokes going that way but then especially this eye needs to be darker the way that it's set in so I'll actually use the side of my brush to make larger strokes So it's okay that we're making that area darker around the eye. We accentuate that cheekbone since it needs to get darker. Grab more of that brown. And same for up top here, so there's quite a bit there down the center of that nose and it'll really help to show some hairs that kind of spiral out towards the left out of the nose area. So now you can start to see where that light was hitting that dog's face. But it doesn't need to be quite so light, so let's just add a little bit of dimension to the left side here and above the eye. We're just not going to cover quite as much ground. Let's show a little bit of a sculpted shadow there up top. And especially this side. So I'm just kind of laying in some pretty big thick strokes. Grab a little more of that brown. So there's gonna be certain areas that we'll go back through and we can use the real tip of our brush or switch to that fine liner brush and continue to show more um, little hairs. And then again on this side above the eye, and let's do a darker one right where the eye kind of goes into the bridge of the nose. I might have been a little too messy. I'll just grab water and smooth that out. All right, let's continue to sculpt this side of the nose. So I'm just going to grab that brown and do some more strokes, especially around the smile area here. Kind of paint a little more in on that side for the smile. So we're getting really pretty close for shadowing, but I want to go back and add a lot more shadow to the dog's ears. So I'm going to grab Payne's Gray and mix it with brown to get kind of a grayish brown color. And then I only want kind of, you know, a fairly light to medium amount of that color on my brush. Being careful not to touch our painting where it might be wet. So I am just going to begin by outlining that ear. And then do a few little hair flicks up top there. We'll get rid of that paint and then very carefully smooth that out. Let's grab a little bit more of that and just help to paint in that top part and even do a wet on wet technique towards the bottom to really darken that. And then let's grab some of that warm brown, just paint that in there where it kind of overlaps. And then we'll grab even more of that brown and paint it in where the ear meets the head there. Just kind of paint some small strokes. With that same amount, I think I want to add even more shadow towards the bottom of that ear. You can take a fine liner or just use a real fine tip. So 
So I think that got kind of too dark. I want to blend that. So I'll just kind of pat that with a dry um, water only brush. All right, looking good. So let's switch gears to the right ear, pick up a little Payne's Gray to mix with our brown. So I'll just start kind of where the ear meets the head. Then as I work my way up, I'll paint little tiny strokes. And then now I'll continue with that same color and use much larger strokes for the inside of the ear, especially towards where it meets the head. Let's get rid of that paint on our brush. And then I will just smooth it out. So I want to add a little bit of a darker area right there because the ear kind of folds there. Maybe let's help outline that side. Right, so that looks really great for the ears. So let's see, we need to add more dimension towards the bottom and of the neck. So I'm just gonna pick up Payne's Gray, real light wash mixed with brown. And that's what's going to help darken this area right below the chin. So I'll just do a nice swipe and then fade that out. So I only want it to be grayish there. Next, I want to grab a little more of the warm brown mixed with burnt orange, and I'll use that on this side and transition that into the color we just painted. So it wouldn't hurt to grab some of that same brown and just help outline the dog especially around the face here. And then along the chin line here. All right, looking really great. So now to finish up that tongue, let's grab some of that burnt orange and mix it with a little bit of brown and then the red. So we will paint quite a bit there, maybe smooth it out. It's kind of where the tongue meets the, um, the tooth. We'll just do another layer up top here and then smoothing it out. Let's grab red and paint that towards the back here to help darken that. towards this part of the back, the tongue. So otherwise that's looking really nice. I can grab a little bit of Payne's Gray, let's drop in a line and help outline where the mouth overlaps. And with that same color, we can just kind of do little motions that look like they're outlining some teeth. They don't have to be perfect. All right, so that mouth looks done there. So now we're ready to add in just those tiny details. So there's quite a bit of dark whiskers. So with this fine liner brush, I'm just going to pick up the Payne's Gray. I have quite a bit of it on my brush. And I'll just begin to paint on little whiskers. So with really light pressure, just painting those so they uh, fade out and look more realistic. You don't want to make them too thick. They don't need to stand out 
through drastically. So that might be enough for this painting. I see a few that kind of come off the chin down here. And then I see some more that go off the eyebrow hair. So I'll just do a few little ones. So this is a really careful motion, not to paint too heavy, especially up top here. So something like that. And if you're afraid like I am, maybe that was a little too dark, I'll use my white gouache paint to help soften some of those dark areas. So now time for the final details, which is usually the bleed proof white or any white gouache paint. I stick with my little liner brush. I'll grab just enough paint that I need for little white highlights around the painting. And I can kind of dilute that a little bit, but I want to keep it not as diluted as you would watercolor. So with our little highlight hairs, I'm going to help soften this whisker line up top here. And then do a few around the eye. Do a few on this eye. It just helps to kind of bring it more to life, look more realistic especially on this nose, so I'll do a few that direction and head it up towards the forehead. It just really helps show the direction of hairs. Do a few along the chin line here. Might want to add some to the ear here, just to help show some more hair texture. Add a few to the inside. So we're just doing short little strokes. Do some on the highlight. So if there's anywhere else you need to fix in the eye, this white paint is great for that. So I might just bring in a little bit, a touch on that side. Better highlight on that one. Can even help highlight down the middle of the tongue. All right, so there is our very happy mixed breed dog. Thanks so much for joining me in today's tutorial of learning how to paint this dog breed. I have a whole dog breed course on how to learn to watercolor over 31 different dog breeds. And that will be available through my website and get on the list because there are exciting things coming, exciting bonuses. And I highly recommend if you are wanting to learn pet portraiture or if you would like to just learn how to paint your own dog or do this for a hobby, this course will help guide you learning how to paint all the different dog features, mixing colors and uh, hair textures, eyes, nose, all those details so you can have a successful painting experience with painting dogs. Thanks so much for joining today and I will see you next time. So let's chat about uh, any questions that you have. So I did see one. I think Tori sent one in. Um, do you ever add white watercolor to lighten a color? Okay, so she's talking about color mixing that white paint that I have or are you talking about a white um, transparent watercolor? I think, okay, now I think I understand that you're asking about um, a transparent watercolor white so they make a white watercolor paint that's not what 
Um, this was that I was using to do the details at the very end for our portrait today. And um, I have, I have used the white, yep, she's asking about the white transparent paint. Um, I, I've never used it for pet portraits. Um, I usually only make the transparency and lightness um, by showing the white of the paper coming through. So using more water, less paint. Um, and then that way I am able to still bring in the bright whites of the paint of the bleedproof white. Um, I have mixed white watercolor with like a red to create a pink before. So in some of my shop products, I like that, that look there, but I've never done it for pet portraiture. I'd like to know if anybody else has done that. That's a great, great question. Um, okay, so sizing of the actual painting areas for your portraits. So, um, yeah, that's a great question. So the question was, um, do you actually paint a five by seven sheet of paper or do you paint something smaller so it can fit into a um, smaller, like an actual five by seven? So what I do is I actually, I paint on the exact print size. So print sizes um, for framing are standard. So they're standard five by seven, eight by 10, 11 by 14 sizes. And when you get a print, um, when you order from the store or get a print, they come in that pretty much that exact size, five by seven, eight by 10, 11 by 14. So uh, that is what I do is I cut to an actual five by seven size or eight by 10. And then that, um, when the customer gets it, so they make mats, um, they make pre-made mats because that's just such a common standard size that um, will frame a five by seven. So what that mat does is it goes over ever so slightly on the edge. So it might cover like I, not even an eighth of an inch sometimes, um, but so that this five by seven sits inside of a mat. So you definitely want to paint, um, if you can for people, more standard sizes, you could paint any size that you want um, because there is the custom framing option as well. So that was a, that was a really great question. Um, let's see, any other questions too? We could talk about supplies, anything like that. Um, oh, okay. So yes. Yeah, so, yep. Talking about composition. So when you talk about composition, um, because you're planning for framing, you got to think about that. Um, so yes, you are totally on the right track when you're on a five by seven, you kind of want to make sure that you leave a little bit of a border unless, you know, for pet portraits, I never paint to the edge. I always leave a little bit of a border because I have to imagine how it would be framed and knowing that some of it's going to get um, covered up. So remember that when you're signing your artwork too, you wanna to make sure that it's up far enough so it's not going to get covered up or look awkward next to the mat that's gonna come in or, or frame if you're not even matting it, the frame will also over um, come over the, the painting too. Okay, good, that's awesome. Um, how do you calculate pricing? That is such a great question and I, I'll go over this um, briefly. I go into it a little more in depth into um, in my Master Watercolor Dog Breeds course. I know it's such a hot topic and it's always, it's such a hard one to answer. But so when I first got started, what I did is I did a lot of research. I found artists, you know, on Instagram is kind of the best place to find this type of community of custom portrait artists. And I looked at their website, they nine times out of 10 list their prices on their website as, as I do too. So you can go and, and check out my website and scroll through and see all the different options that I offer for with pet portraits. And so when it came to pricing, I looked, I did a lot of market research to see what the going rate was for various sizes. And that also helped me figure out exactly what sizes I wanted to offer. Um, because I knew if people were already doing it and figuring it out, it was definitely working. So I looked on and I wrote down pricing that people had. So then once I knew kind of the going rate within the market, which I don't even know if that is, uh, there is a going rate because there's such a range. So from there, I decided, um, I did a practice one and I looked at how long this portrait would take me for an eight by 10. Um, so I approached it with a business mindset. If you're just doing it for a hobby, obviously you probably won't be pricing it. Or if you're just doing it as, um, you know, maybe a little bit of a side gig, 
um, but I, I was doing it. This was definitely going to be part of my full-time watercolor business. So I wanted to look at it as a business um, standpoint and I knew how long one was going to take me and it actually took me around three hours back then and I think I'm getting slower to be honest because I get more and more detailed as I am growing in my skills and I want to get them more detailed anyway so um, knowing the three hour time slot I kind of decided overall how much I was hoping to make for the year how many portraits I wanted to take on for the month. I do them by month um, and I control how many I want to do that way. And I decided then this going rate that I wanted to, to start out. It was um, one that I felt comfortable charging, but also not, um, not too much, but it also probably was a little on the lower stand um, of the range of pricing for portraits too. So. You don't the best part about it is that when you launch a portrait business like that you start with a pricing you don't have to stay there for very long you could do just a few portraits get your portfolio up there get your reviews coming in um, word of mouth is amazing so once you get that all um, started and get a few portraits under under you then that's when I um, I did raise my prices and from there I usually increase at least like $50 $25 it just depends and I do charge for a flat rate shipping. So that usually is around, um, I think $4 on my website. So factor in your packaging materials, um, obviously your materials to paint your portrait, which is sometimes not a big cost. It's just truly your time and the value. So as the demand for your portraits, I could talk about this for a while, so I'll, I'll keep it short. As the demand for your portraits goes up, you have to price your portraits higher and higher because that you a deserve it and um, you can't you can't paint all the time um, and so that kind of helps bring the the order count down and you don't maybe need to say no to as many people either that way all right any other questions you are welcome I'm so thankful for all of you guys for being here um, so just a quick few things I have. If you are on my email list already and subscribed, you have already received an email during this course or during this master class for my newest Master Watercolor Dog Breeds course, which is honestly a dream come true to be able to share this uh, with you all. So, oh good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. There are questions on Facebook too. Okay, let me pull up the questions on Facebook. You work on more than one at the same time oh that's another great question all right so let me quick just overview uh the course that has been released and then i'm going to go back to questions and pull up the facebook questions too um so the the or the the course has 31 different dog breeds so if you go to my instagram account you'll see from my challenge that i did i recorded every single dog um, one of those dog breeds, including the one that we did today was a, um, a demo from the actual course and they are all recorded step by step in bite sized parts for you to paint at your own pace in your own, um, your own time frame. So you get to keep the course forever, which is really, really cool. The other best part about it is that you also will get any updates I make to the course. So I, if I want to add another module, if I want to tweak a module, if you guys you know, as your feedback comes in, and I, I definitely want to make the course as, as good as it possibly can be for you guys and give you the confidence in painting any, any dog that you want to paint. Um, it's the perfect course for anybody who is looking to get started with pet portraiture um, or if you're just interested in finding out more about my own techniques that I, I like to use for my pet portraits. Um, it's also great if you're just looking to do a hobby. If you're looking to have a fun way of learning watercolor, this is a really cool course. Um, you have to be a dog lover because it's naturally all dogs, which I totally am. I always have been. So it's only fitting for me to be able to share um, all that I've been learning over these past years for watercolor pet portraiture. So you will be getting an email if you are on my email list with all the information and a link to the course. It's also linked in my profile. If you go there after this um, and be sure to reach out with any questions. All right, let me grab my laptop. So I can answer some Facebook questions. 
All right, do you work on more than one? Okay, great question. Very rarely do I work on more than one painting at a time. Uh, I What I do do though is, so I like to take on a certain amount per month. You're so welcome. Thank you so much for being here for anybody who is signing off. I'm gonna be around here to still answer more questions though. Um, so what I do is, again, because mine is treated and seen as a business for me with my pet, portrait, pet portraits, is that I batch work the sketches. So I usually have all of my orders already submitted, have already been purchased for the upcoming month. So I already have my calendar of portraits that I know of what's coming each week. I'll do a couple a week. And so then I'll go and I will batch... Um, depends on how much time I have on a certain day, but I'll batch sketch all of the portraits. And that simply makes such a big deal or a big difference for timing. Um, you don't have to start a sketch. I don't know. It just, it, it really does save on a lot of time when you can get all your sketches ready to go because then you can just sit down and paint whether you have an hour to spare, you know, if you had an hour to spare to work on a portrait and you didn't have it sketched out yet, you wouldn't have used that hour to, to actually paint, you know, you probably would have just been wasting time like sometimes I do. So, um, that if I am having to get a lot done is a really, really great way to go about doing it. All right, let's see, let's get back into my group here. The other thing with the course is that you will get access to a private Facebook group only for course members. So we can, um, you can ask any questions specifically about the course and I am the one monitoring it. So I will be answering any questions that you have. All right, we had, let's see, where is my, I've had a lot of posts here lately. So I am just digging up. Okay, here we are. Thanks for bearing with me here. Okay, so someone was just asking about the commission process from start to finish, which um, this one already had the sketch ready for you. I go more in depth about my sketching process, um, but I'll just share with you right now too that I actually, um, I'm not afraid to simply trace an outline of an image, of the reference image that's submitted for me for a portrait. Um, some, I mean, that may surprise people or that may be um, the way that you decide you wanna go as well. The thing about sketching, so I totally could do it from eye every single time, but when it comes to running a business, time is, time is precious. So just getting that simple outline already sketched out um, and tracing um, a simple outline of a photo just sets it up for a you're saving time but it also sets you up for success if that's the style you're going for if you're going for a realistic style so don't be hard on yourself if you decide that um, tracing is is a good way to go okay so that brings me then back to or on that same topic kind of about reference photos so reference photos are incredibly important and you want to make sure that you always have a good reference photo to work from. I have had, um, I mean, you start to learn this too as you, as you do more portraits. I've worked from some um, not so great reference photos. I'll usually ask for multiple photos. That makes a big difference. And um, that way I can find a pose that I really like. Sometimes the picture's not super clear. The clearer the picture, the better the portrait, especially for a realistic portrait. And... Um, so once they submit those those photos, I have to take a look at them, and if they just are not very good, um, and they don't have any additional uh, photos, a lot of the times I, or I shouldn't say a lot, it's been pretty rare, but I will have to say no, just because it, it does not turn out to the standard that I want to be able to paint for them. So um, you have to be honest with yourself and with your customer and they love that too if you they don't want to pay for something if they don't feel like you um feel like you can do a good job with it so making sure i ask for anything that can be preferred like chest up or kind of looking at the at the camera a slight angle is great too 
and you want to make sure that it's clear so like the reference photo from today's workshop was amazing to use um i i rarely get perfect pictures like that so you get better as that's the um best thing about like this course that i'm releasing is it's going to give you a lot of practice hours and you'll get more confident because you start to learn all the different um similarities between dog breeds so dogs have very similar features when it comes to their noses their eyes just a lot of similarities that will help give you confidence that even if you do get a blurry photo that you'll be able to decide that yep i can still understand you know even though it's not super clear the shadows and how the hairs should actually should actually lay so that has been um, over the years really really helpful for me with all you know the more you practice um, let's see. And then you, you should communicate to, I just want to put one more point to that and that topic is you should communicate this on your website. So on your website listing, you can put a side by side to show, you know, a really good reference photo and then what the painting looks like next to it. I do that. And I, I know that visually really helps people understand what type of photo that they should submit. Okay, let's see. Um, is that, did I get through all the questions I see on my, my question box here in the group? Um, I'm over in Watercolor for Wellness is, our, is my um, group for anybody who wants to join. I was hosting a challenge in there this week or the past two weeks. Um, if you've been a part of the challenge, you have until end of day Monday, so end of day tomorrow at 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. so midnight CST central time and after that if you participated in all and posted all of the challenge paint paintings which some of you really have done an amazing job keeping up with all of this like I am just so amazed and love seeing all of your guys's paintings so you'll be in the running for a giveaway for the pet portrait course for free which will be announced on Tuesday all right, any other questions that I could help answer? So I will continue to share more of my love for watercolor. I am going to be adding more in 2022 to my YouTube channel as well. Um, but if you are excited about learning pet portraiture and just looking to get started, the course is great for anybody who has even just a little bit of watercolor experience you can be very, very beginner, um, but you definitely want to have, have had a little bit of practice. If you haven't, I do have a free five-day course on Learn to Watercolor over on my website. And um, that's all you really need to get started is just to get the feel for, for paints and, and how they flow on the paper and different textures and strokes. I also go over some of that pertaining just to dog portraiture in the course. Um, so yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up and if there are any more questions send me a direct message you can reach me by email and i would love to help answer anything thank you tori have so much fun at your white elephant party oh my goodness it's so fun to know that we are so close to the to the holidays now thank you all i see some very familiar faces tori um, all you guys have just done an amazing job with this challenge and it really, it truly means so much to me. So thank you for um, coming along with me and I hope you all enjoyed today's masterclass on pet portraiture. So I look forward to painting with you again soon. All right, you guys have a wonderful rest of your Sunday.